All right, I'd like to call this meeting to order of October 13th, 2022. And I'll ask John if he'll lead us in the pledge. Then place your hands over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Linda, roll call. Okay. Councilmember Lewis. Here. Councilmember Sanchez. Here. Vice Mayor King. Here. And Mayor Sierra. Here. Alrighty. Any reordering of the agenda? We have no reordering this evening. All right. Public comments. I have two speaker slips for public comments. The first one will be <coughs> Kathy Marilyn. Good evening, Council. Uh, just a real quick announcement about the candidate forum coming up this Sunday. Um, so you're all welcome to join us. I know two of you will be there for sure. Um, but it's Sunday over at the Oak Valley Multipurpose Room from one to four. We're going to break it down into districts. So uh, district one um, will be from one o'clock to two o'clock. And then we'll do the mayors from two to three and then district four from three to four. Um, and so you'll have a chance to meet the candidates. We'll ask some questions, answers, and then um, you'll just have time to meet them afterwards. And then I did upload the videos and stuff to you guys. So there, um, we also conducted a one-on-one -on -one interview with each of the candidates a couple of weeks ago. Um, so for those who can't make the in-person forum, they're welcome to go on and uh, check out that link. We have a Facebook event page for the Buellton Candidate Forum, and you can see the link there with all the candidate videos. So you can kind of get an idea of who they are and put a face with a name. So um, so this Sunday over at Oak Valley Elementary um, Multipurpose Room, we'll be there. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Kathy, um, how do they access that video? So right now, um, it's it's a landing page on our site, but I've got it up on the Facebook event page. So they can go to the Buellton uh, Candidate Forum. I think it's Buellton City Council Candidate Forum. I forget how I named that page um, as an event. So just search it on on Facebook. And then um, in there, I posted it on the discussion page. So I've got the flyer for the times of the forum, um, a map of the district so people can see what district they live in. And then today we put up the actual link for the Facebook for the videos, I'd rather. Okay. So, or they can contact me or if any of you have the link, you can share it on your social media platforms if you want as well. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Kyle Abello. <laughs> Honorable council members, um, I wanted to tell you all personally uh, about my decision to step down from my position to start a new chapter in my life. It's been an honor to serve this amazing community in building a successful recreation department. And I'm so proud of our team in the many partnerships that we've developed to provide new programs and facilities for the public. I'll be working with Scott and the rec team over the next few months to help ensure a smooth transition to new leadership. And you'll still be seeing me and my family around the Valley, so I'm not going anywhere. It's just time for a change. So thank you again for the opportunity and for all your support. This is a great city. So keep on doing good work. And Kyle, what was your, go ahead, Dave. What was your leaving date? We haven't gotten that specific, okay. um, but it will be after the new year. So okay. we've got lots of events between now and then, Haunted House and Winterfest and camps and all kinds of stuff. So. We're going to get all the work out of the camp. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, Kyle, I'd like to say that, that the, all the hard work that you have done for this rec department cannot be replaced by anyone. Um, you know, we can get someone else, but the work you've done has just been exemplary the whole time that I've known you since... 2008 whenever i started in council so i appreciate that. wish you all the best thank you very much vice mayor, vice mayor king ma'am may i kyle i just want to tell you that uh our our park and recreation department has grown leaps and bounds uh it's it's a it's a department that every other city aspires to to be like and I, I don't know what your next adventure is, but uh, I am eternally grateful for what you've done for the city of Buellton and turning our community into, into even a tighter knit, uh, more worldly, more 
physically fit uh our kids it's artistic just, and cultural <laughs> there you, i i could you could go on and on and on you will be sorely missed and i truly appreciate that you've given us uh the years that you have to to make our community so special thank you yeah, thank, thank you, you. You got to make again. Not leaving here. <laughs> no, you can leave the no, meeting. Okay. <laughs> 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 Stay here in the corner. Bye. Thanks, Sam. Good night. All right, moving on to the consent calendar. We have minutes of September 22nd, 22, regular city council meeting. The list of claims to be approved and ratified for payment to date for fiscal year 2022 23. And financial report for the fourth quarter uh, ending June 30th. 2022. Anyone like to pull anything off of there? No? No, I'd move for approval. I'll second. Linda? Okay. Councilmember Sanchez. Aye. Councilmember Lewis. Aye. Vice Mayor King. Aye. And Mayor Sierra. Oops, you're on mute. mute. I, I, I. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, and, a, and I would I'd like to thank uh, Chanel for such a good job on the on the uh, report. Yeah, absolutely. Well, You're you. welcome. All right, moving on to presentations. Scott, any presentations? We have no presentations this evening. Public hearings. Oh, uh, no, we have no public hearings either. All right, and council member comments or items. This will be for things for the future agenda on the, um, to come up before the council. Yeah, I have one from a community member that would like for us to take a look at the village park about adding some shade and possibly a baby swing. So I was hoping that we could take a look at that park and see if that wasn't something that we could accommodate in some shape or fashion. All right. Yes, we were aware of that request. And if the council, uh, if there's consensus on the council, we will... Uh, expend a bit of resources and see what we can't find out about that. We'll bring a report back. Thank you. Oh, ab absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank Vice you. Mayor. Ma'am. I had, I just had a couple. Uh, first of all, October 19th, I, I, I see Pam, well, I can't see, but Pam Nico's not in the audience to remind everybody about uh, their ribbon cutting, their big day, October 19th from, I believe it's 1030 to one or 130. Um, they're opening up their veterans center and the public is welcome. Uh, they'll be barbecuing and it's just another notch in our senior center's amazing portfolio of what they do for our community. I also had one comment I'd like to make. Um, I just wanted to clarify. I talked to Greg uh, a couple months back, the uh, Buellton Unified School District asked me to support their Measure R. I told them I would be happy as a resident to support that, but that I could not in good conscience do it as the mayor of Buellton because there wasn't time for a city council meeting to get the rest of council's input. I uh, did send a flyer out with Holly Sierra's support, but it also said Holly Sierra, mayor of Buellton. And although I'm sure if I hold everybody on council, they would be all in favor of endorsing Measure R. I just wanted council and the public to know that when I agreed to support it, I was supporting it as a private resident, not um, representing the council. So I just wanted to set that straight. Gotcha. Okay, good enough. Uh, anyone else? The time for committee reports too, or no. just comments? No, it's just comments and items. Um, I would, yeah, uh, no, I'm. I, I'd like to check on that shade deal. I, I went over there. I got the the note and looked around. There isn't much shade, but maybe we could plant larger trees next time. <laughs> yeah, everyone. <laughs> uh, eventually, there'll be shade. But uh, yeah. anyway, maybe something a little faster. But then, uh, we will look into. And are we also uh, doing the water park still in that area? The council that, has authorized expenditure of, I believe it's Prop 68 funds for yeah. the uh, installation of a splash pad at both Riverview Park and Village Park. Um, I'm not sure what the time frame is on that. Rose, do we have a, an idea at this point? or um, Not yet. We still need to look at details and specification of the splash pad because we mm -hmm. just have a concept 
but nothing that gives us information as far as the sizing for a basin and a recycling okay. system, et cetera, et cetera. So That's one of the things we'll have Kyle wrap up before he sneaks out. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that one of the splash pads where the water squirts up out of the ground? Oh, yes. Yeah. They have that at Universal Studios. Pretty yep. cool. The kids have a lot of fun at that. Um, okay, moving on to written communication. Scott, do we have any written communication? We have no written communications this evening. Okay, John, this is the time for committee reports. Well, um, Arts and Culture Committee had another meeting uh, with our, uh, with Kyle Bello. <laughs> but, you know, so I'm gonna uh, make a comment I truly miss uh, and uh, for all his contributions uh, that he's done to the city. And uh, like you said, it's, it's gonna be hard to replace, but uh, he's laid a, quite a foundation and uh, big, big shoes to fill. And uh, we're all gonna miss him. And no, uh, I guess we'll be in the future. We'll bring back the projects that we're working on for the arts and culture community. Thank you, yeah. Madam Mayor. Uh, I, actually, I was at the JPA annual conference uh, last Thursday and Friday, uh, where I got to uh, our our city attorney was there uh, teaching a class. He's he's very good. Uh, it it was kind of mandatory. A lot of the classes were legal. Uh, but it was fun to catch up with people from different cities that we know, and uh, I truly appreciate the opportunity to go down and spend the day and a half there. So thank you. And unfortunately, I was in Nashville for that, so I couldn't attend, but the JPIA is always a great, great um, mm -hmm. meetings that we have down there, very informative. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So let's move on to business items. Uh, first business item is going to be the annual report from Buellton Visitors Bureau for the period of July 2021 through June 2022. And the lead on this is going to be uh, Director Chanel Zamora. Madam Mayor and members of the City Council, um, today uh, you'll be receiving the Buellton Visitors Bureau annual report. This is the required um, Fiscal year report for July 2021 through June 2022. Uh, the Visitor Center will be giving a presentation, and Kathy Breland is here tonight. So I'll turn it over to Kathy now. Found it. Let me see if I can get here. If I can do that. Good evening, everybody. Um, and Madam Mayor, happy birthday to you as you celebrate. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much yeah yeah and i'll second that 32 <laughs> and stay in <laughs> yeah right okay that's not quite there yet let me move this out of the way let me see if i can get this done properly here um okay that is there and that's okay that's good all right there we there go there you go <laughs> Um, we'll go through the first part kind of quickly because I know it's been in your packet, but this is some of the, it's some, some of it's just a review. So uh, we'll go to the next page, Scott. So this is our annual review um, for last fiscal year. So we're going to bring you through what we've done. Um, keep in mind, you know, we are moving through COVID, coming out of COVID, travel's coming back, um, prints coming back. There's a lot of things changing, right, uh, throughout this last fiscal year. And um, so we were navigating and pivoting and trying new things and doing different things as we went through it. So um, I'll get into that a little bit as we go, but kind of looking back to the beginning of our strategic marketing plan. So <clears throat> back in 2017, um, we put together a five-year marketing plan. And so we've been implementing that for the last few years. And of course, COVID wasn't part of that plan <laughs> originally. So of course, we've had to make some changes along the way. But we managed to really hit and go beyond our goals, which was super exciting. Um, after all, through all of that, even we were able to, to still hit our goals and move in and beyond. Um, so the next page, this just kind of goes through, I don't want to bore you. I mean, it's just a lot of review stuff that was in the strategic plan. Um, I've talked about this other times too, I think just kind of a review, but just kind of looking at our spending, um, what our marketing action plan was and our overall strategic goal, um, creating, driving traffic, influencing visitors, and then looking at the visitations. The next page, Scott. 
Um, so the action plan, basically some of the goals were to uh, generate an overall awareness um, and distinct positioning of Buellton, uh, generate a targeted unique visitor to Buellton um, and looking through our website uh, hits and whatnot, generate incremental overnight visitation, of course, and travel spending. Uh, we wanted to serve as a catalyst in the tourism industry in Buellton um, in the region, bringing together all the elements of the industry. So, and then also increase awareness among local residents and uh, our public officials in the importance of tourism in our local economy. So um, the next page, again, I'm just gonna kind of blaze through some of this. I don't wanna read everything that's boring. <laughs> um, uh, so putting the plan in action, of course, for, first thing we did was branding, right? We kind of had to create a look, a feel, a brand for Buellton. What did that look like? How are we gonna differentiate ourselves in the in the whole scheme of things out there? There's so many people vying for your money and your, you know, your visits. So how are we gonna stand out and get people to Buellton? So branding was a huge part of that effort. Uh, we had a team, we came together, we worked on that um, very closely. Uh, we developed a website after we had our brand and that we were had and um, developed a whole new website and upgraded what we had. Uh, we continue to invest in developing ongoing content. Of course, you have to continue to renew and refresh and to keep that alive and traffic and on all the Google search and the algorithms and all that good stuff, you have to continue to, to do some changing on that. So um, and all of our other channels that included photography sessions and video and written content and blogs. So um, so we did a lot of that uh, in the beginning. This is kind of like the little major milestones where we came from and where we are now. So in 2018, you can kind of see that's when we kind of be went with our Discover Buellton logo. Uh, we gave it a distinct look. We have certain colors, certain fonts. We have a whole brand package that we use um, in all of our marketing materials now. And it's all based around uh, what we designed there with our branding um, um, process. And then the next page. Um, so putting the plan to action. So again, we continue to invest in our digital media plan. We continue to support social media accounts that we have Facebook um, and Instagram. And then we continued our email newsletter. So we continue to gather emails when we go out to trade shows or in the visitor center, anywhere we can collect emails of people who want to hear more about Buellton or come visit us. We do it on the website. Um, so there's multiple ways people can um, become a member, not a member, but get in, included on that newsletter. Um, and then just kind of growing that database. So we had to continue to do that. The next page, um, visitor information. So promote the upgraded Buellton website again, as I said before. Um, we wanted it to be the primary visitor information tool. So we had to drive all that traffic to our website to really learn and hone in on where can you stay, where can you eat, what can you do in Buellton, what are events are happening, what's on your calendar. So there's lots of information that that website serves for. Um, and we wanted that to be the primary focus. So out of market content development, of course, we had developed basic tools, including, you know, a series of videos, photography, copy that tells a story about Buellton. Um, and so, and that just all takes time. It's a lot of work and a lot of effort, but it all comes together nicely. And it's all part of the, the storytelling that we do. We wanted to provide ongoing fulfillment of information requests. So um, as the awareness for Buellton and, you know, increased, we wanted to make sure we could fulfill those requests and have story ideas there for people, whether it's, um, you know, family vacationing, or if it's a couple's retreat, or if it's mom's day out or, you know, weekend or whatever, girls, girls weekend or bachelorette parties or whatever it is. There's so many different angles we can go out and market to different demographics. And because that's what's kind of the beauty of Buellton is we have something for all ages. And you'll see later, I have a slide of kind of what our age demographic is. It's almost like 25 to 65 years old. It's, it's we encompass a great amount of, um, of age groups, which is really nice. That just make you know it's, it allows us to market even more. So um, the sales, um, of course, that okay. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I'm flying through this. Um, we wanted to implement a unified approach to attract visitors to Buellton. So uh, and leverage our trade shows exposure. So we do that both on a domestic and international level. Um, we also work with the regional Central Coast Tourism Council. I've mentioned that different times, but that's a regional tourism uh, group that we. It's everything from Santa Cruz, Monterey area down to the Channel Islands, Ventura region. So we market this whole coastline as a Central Coast, and we all work very collaboratively together. Um, we go to different trade shows, and we're all marketing and showing you know showcasing each other's if somebody wants to come and do a road trip we're like hey come over and meet our neighbors in slow or wherever and they can tell you more about what's going on there so we all just work really well together and market this region um, and we're really trying to 
get and visit California's eyes as as a fourth big destination, right? There's LA, San Diego, San Francisco, visit California. That's their big, their big three. But we're like, wait, we've got this whole central coast and we have everything and more than those cities have pretty much combined. And so, you know, we have the flights into this region. We have all the attractions. We have coastline, we have, you know, marine sanctuaries and channel islands and museums and all kinds of stuff. So um, anyhow, we're really trying to get Visit California to recognize us as a, as a number four kind of in the in the big scheme of things. So anyhow, uh, again, trade shows are important to us. Um, and then just taking advantage of Visit California and what they're doing domestically and internationally and kind of following their coattails and, and riding that out. So we're not trying to, you know, just cast a fishing pole out there and hope for something. We want to see what everybody else is doing and try to tag on to some of that so that the messaging is even amplified more if we can do that. So, all right, then advertising. So of course we had to develop a media plan um, uh, specific to Southern California and Central California. So those are our target segments. LA has always been a big market. We're kind of their playgrounds on the weekend. So um, that's still a huge market for us. So we don't wanna let that go. We gotta continue to speak to them. Um, but then we can also look at new markets emerging or go north a little bit or whatnot and try to get traffic um, here. Create advertisements using messaging, of course, and photos, um, promoting our key attractions. And then as the main visitor information tool, drive them to the website. Like I said earlier, we always wanna drive them to the website if we can. So the next slide is kind of fun because this goes into um our goals and so so we wanted to one of our goals when we set out in 2017 was to increase tourism spending in the city of Buellton from the current estimated 60 million to over 75 million and this year I am so excited because we not only did we blow it out we went way over the estimated TOT that we had planned for we had planned for 3.6 million we came in at 4.29 million so huge increase in TOT it's the biggest we've ever received in the city of Buellton's history so um, and it, you know this just speaks loudly to all of our hotel properties I and mean, we've all been through this pandemic together but they just, I mean, I know the Hampton Inn, those girls were checking people in, taking reservations, cleaning rooms, doing the laundry. I mean, everything, because they had no staff, they had very minimal staff. And there was the manager, I mean, they were just running around doing everything. And so they hung in there and they stuck it out. And to come in this high over what we estimated is just amazing. And I'm so, so thrilled for Buellton, but I'm proud of our hoteliers and everybody who helped us get there. It's just, they really, I mean, they, you know, they were short staffed. They just, you know, they couldn't open or they could open. And it was just a wonky year from, they did amazing. So that was a 42.1% increase over last year, which is amazing still. And then um, SMG is the company we use to set up our strategic plan. And they provide us with a formula to kind of tell us what the tourism spending is and how to um, a how to calculate that. Um, and so with that calculation and with that TOT, we're showing that the tourism spending was approximately 16 million, am I saying this right? 16 million, 259,000. So that was huge for, for that year. That was super, super good for us. So a supplementary goal to generate targeted unique visitors. Um, again, we closed out the year uh, over our goal with 76,348 unique visits. So that just means people who are coming to our site and, on, you know, just on their own. We're not, um, they're not getting referred or anything. It's a unique visit. So they're coming to us kind of not generically, organically, I should say. Um, so that it was a great goal that we hit. So we're just, we're just super excited with all the numbers this year because we've been, hit, we've been hitting everything and then going beyond and, and it's true across the board and central coast, especially people were looking for that outdoor experience, the rural adventure cities are still suffering. I don't think some of the cities will come back to maybe 2025. Um, they got a long ways to go. And so we're very fortunate to be where we are and be able to have the tourism base that we do because they're going to continue to come and enjoy the out door space, the open spaces that we have. So um, again, looking at the um, the next slide there is, um, by the numbers, we can look at the email database, our Facebook, Instagram, um, again, the, the various growth we had throughout all of those platforms, which was great. Um, I'll talk a little bit about our podcast we started. Um, so we did our kind of series one of podcasts, which was kind of fun. So that was something new. Um, that we implemented and we've had 959 listens since June. So that was pretty good because that's something you got to continue to market and get it out there and businesses need to kind of market it as their own too that did it. So 
Um, okay, the next slide. So this just kind of breaks down our income and expenses um, for our budget. So of course we received the 450,000 from the city. That's our, our um, budget to work with. And then on the right side there, I have our expenses listed out. So you can see kind of the categories, how we uh, kind of bunch them into our budget. So we have, you know, the visitors bureau operations, so that's going to be your employee services, your you know, utilities, whatever it is, our operational uh, expenses there at the visitor center. Um, and then the next line there, you have grants and specific projects that we do. Um, then we have economic development. And then, of course, the promo and advertising, which is always a huge chunk because that's what we're here to do is market the city of Buellton. So over 65 percent of our budget is used towards um, promo promotion and marketing and um, advertising. So we're proud of that. We came in a little bit over, but um, I think it was well worth it and <laughs> how we ended up this year. Um, okay, the next slide. So this is kind of just a little comparison. It kind of gives you an idea of, okay, we're giving them $450,000 to market and we just pulled in four point whatever million. So kind of what percentage are we spending of that income that we receive in tourism and marketing and what is it costing you, the city? So basically um, about 10% of that is being used to market, right? And the rest is coming into your general fund. So uh, again, great numbers um, for this last year. We're super proud of, of everybody that was a part of making that happen so that kind of gives you an idea of percentage wise um and the next slide and stop me at any time if you have questions i'm kind of i don't want to bore you guys to death i want to go through it um and then this is just kind of some an idea a little look at visitor traffic and again um coming out of covid so numbers definitely went up this year i mean we were quite quiet there for a little while those couple of years but uh, we definitely started to see more foot traffic coming into the visitor center, which is great because then we can, you know, kind of share everything there is to do. Um, and they love when we have maps and information and what's going on, you know, where to eat, where to stop. So, and then also what we saw an increase of this year uh, was the visitor bags. So these are welcome bags, like maybe there's groups at the campground or at the Marriott or a wedding party, family reunion car club, whatever it might be. Um, a lot of times they'll request bags for their group, a little welcome bag. So we put together a Buellton welcome bag for them with maps and brochures and a guide. And we have a cute little Buellton bag we put them in um, and they're free. We just, all this information is free for them, but we're happy to do it because then we can put our information in their hands for their group. And then we also um, offer to go over and speak to their group if they want us to come over. And I've done that to car clubs and stuff that come in and able to kind of share, you know, if they're all, they're coming from all over and some of them have no clue what there is to do here or what they're going to do for the time being and so we're able to kind of give them a little idea and general um push of like try this or go here or do this so and then also something we um did this last year was the county provided us with covid testing kits so we had a lot of people we had about 219 kits that were distributed from the visitor center in january and february so that was um you know and some of those things i gotta say some of those you know we don't mind doing some of these um those handouts like that, because a lot of locals, they don't always go to your visitor center, right? Like they don't have a purpose necessarily. They don't think to go there. Like they don't need a map of the city they live here. So um, they don't think about that. But some of these things that we do, it brings them in. And then they're like, oh, I know you guys were here. This is awesome. Look at all the information. So it's actually really nice. It's a it's a win-win for everybody because then they'll remember us if they have visitors coming into town and, and send them our way. So it's kind of, that's kind of a fun thing is to get the locals in there because sometimes they don't they don't think about it. Okay, next slide, Scott, thank you. Um, so these are just like kind of top fives off of our Google Analytics, some of the countries that visit our website, USA, Canada, China, UK, and Ireland. Of course, Canada um, is open again, so we're seeing a lot more Canadians coming down. They were so ready to get out of Canada, um, and they're coming from the east, eastern Toronto, Montreal, Quebec, as well as Vancouver and BC, so east and west are coming, and they're driving. They drive. They're a lot of them are dry east, not so much east coast, but the, the northwest is a drivable market. Um, and then the states that are coming into the U.S., of course, California, big market and, and Visit California was promoting heavily um, in-state um, uh, travel to everybody and their commercials and their advertisements. They did a lot of in-state uh, promotion. So, of course, California was a big state, New York, Texas, Washington and Ohio, which is kind of a rare random one. But 
Um, some of the flights, it's interesting because we're our Santa Barbara airport is increasing and in some of the flights that they have and the options, which is great for us. So we have some really good direct flights coming in now from Dallas and Denver, even a Chicago seasonal one. Um, of course, up north, Portland, Seattle, San Diego, I think now. So Arizona. So if people can get to those hubs and then bounce over, it's great. So we're seeing a little more travel from those areas as well because it's easier to get here. And, and you'll see that with a lot of the rural regional airports, they're really increasing their, because the, people aren't going into the city so much anymore. They're flying into these other little rural spots and then venturing out from there. So it's really, Santa Barbara's doing a great job of, of getting these um, new flights in, which is great. And then the next slide, who are visitors? So this was kind of fun. Every year, gosh, I've been doing this slide for a long time, but it's always the female that's been researching and making decisions for travel. And this year it flipped. It was the males that came out ahead of doing research. And I don't know the reasoning behind that, um, but it's it was kind of funny. So anyhow, they had over 50% of the visitors to our site were male this year. So um, it was kind of a fun demographic to put in there. But again, normally they're um, the females are kind of scrolling and looking and whatever and I don't know, maybe they're outside in the park and the men were home <laughs> twiddling their thumbs and searching. I don't know. Um, again, there's that age range I was talking about earlier, 25 to 65. So we have such a really good, vast demographic out there to market to of all ages. You've got your young millennials, you've got your baby boomers. I mean, you've got all ages. So it's, it's really, um, it's great for us because we can share so many things with those ages and, and pull them in, whether it's, you know, the younger generation wanting to do wine tasting or, or like I say, their bachelorette parties or, a, you know, a brew fest or whatever it is, an event or something we have going on all the way up to the baby boomers who enjoy maybe Menden Halls or some of our hotels or a nice wine tasting tour or whatnot. So um, and good food, we've got some great food. So, okay, next slide. So this is Jen and I. Um, so we went to the LA Travel and Adventure Show, which was finally in person. We've done some remote ones and all kinds of things. Um, but this year we were in person in LA, um, which was great and actually pretty well attended. There was a lot of people kind of ready to get out there and learn what was going on and what's new because so many destinations were changing things up and there might be new properties coming in or some left or closed or opened or whatever, new adventures, new tours, new all kinds of stuff. So um, anyhow, it was a really good show. Of course, we hand out swag. We have QR codes that can lead them into different social media platforms or our email sign up. That's where we try to gather emails too. So talk to a lot of people um, at the show and it's always good um, to be there in person and just kind of share your experience with with everybody it's just kind of fun to hear the comments that come back so people don't realize sometimes that they've driven into Beulton because they just think it's maybe Solvang or something and we're like um have you been to, have you know pea soup or have you been to Solvang then you've been to Beulton you're like is this in California I'm like yeah it's in California I'm like oh my goodness so we're trying um, okay, next slide. Um, so this is the international. This was back to so IPW is an international travel show. It's put on by Brand USA, um, and basically they invite um, all the countries around the world in travel agents, tour operators, receptive tour operators all come in. And we, this is an appointment based show. Um, it's not just open to the public to come in. It's all, you had to pay to be there and it's an appointment based. So we have to set up all of our appointments prior to, we reach out to all these different travel agents and tour operators. Would you like to have an appointment with us? And we try to get a mutual agreement and schedule that. Um, and there's also a media room, media marketplace. So our PR team was down there as well to represent, that's Michelle in the middle. So she ran our media marketplace. So she's meeting with travel writers and, and um, uh, media journalists to uh, talk about Beulton and hopefully invite them to come and you know visit us and then they can write in their publications and whatnot. So I partner with, um, this is the San Inez Valley. So that's why you see Danielle and Shelby there. Uh, we partnered on the booth and we share the expenses and whatnot, which makes it nice. Um, and then we just have our appointments. So we share our appointments. Uh, we talk about our region, our area. Um, I talk about Buellton and then we all follow up on our own with these with these appointments that we've had. So <clears throat> it's proved to be good. I mean, we do get a lot of good follow up with it. Um, you know, it might not happen right away um, because they're they're then planning and putting all of their materials together for their customers back in their respective countries. So just depends on what season they're planning for and what they're looking for. But a lot of people are looking for new rural outdoor open space. You know, they're, we were very attractive to, to all the people that we met with, which was exciting. So, and that was down in Florida this year, that show. 
Um, okay, and then the next snapshot is our public relations team. So that was Michelle in the middle, um, 360 View PR we work with. And again, they set up our media visits with travel writers um, that come here, learn a little bit more about Buellton, our destination, and also their pitching stories all the time about our area. Um, and then these are all picked up by different writers. Um, so this just kind of gives you a little uh, picture of how many pieces of coverage we had, 80 pieces of coverage. We had 11 media visits this year. Um, it talks about engagement and your readership, um, our advertising value out of everything that we received um, with all the um, stories that we received from these travel writers, it was basically a $50.5 million um, dollar advertising value, which is just, you know, for us, we invite them in and our partners in the industry, hotels, restaurants, attractions, for the most part, comp these people and have them come because they want to be written about, of course, right? So they're getting, they're getting something out of it too. Um, and we might have to treat them to dinner or we might have to pay us, uh, you know, part of their hotel bill. It just depends. We negotiate with each one, but a lot of times we try to get everything comp that we can. Um, and the partners are, are more than willing to help them, especially if we know, and, the, and that's what's nice about the PR team is they can vet these people out because, you know, I think during COVID, a lot of people became travel writers. <laughs> and so we want to vet them out. You know, what's your following? How, how good really are you? And are you reliable? Are you going to write what we want you to write? And who do you work for? If you're a freelancer, where are your stories going to get published? Is it USA Today or is it some, you know, bottom shelf rack that we don't never heard of? So anyhow, they do all the vetting on that, which is great um, and bring people in and they set up um, the, inf so we had an influencer trip. That's the next slide. This was really fun. We had a group of girls come out um, and they're all influencers in different respective places. I mean, they just had all different avenues. Some were really big on social media. We tried to do a social media push um, influencer trip like on their channels, but some of them had different avenues. They were also, you know, some wrote stories, freelanced and some were big on social media. Some was maybe big on Pinterest. And so they all kind of had their little niche. Um, but we had a great time. They were here for two days. They stayed at the Hampton Inn. Um, we welcomed them there with a little happy hour reception. We taught them how to play bocce ball out there. Um, they had a wonderful stay. They did horseback riding. They went down to Community Clay Works. They all made a bowl. Uh, ostrich land, of course. We did some wonderful meals, some wine tasting on Industrial Way. So they really made their way around um, Buellton, learning all about the different things there is to do. And some of these girls had been through the area before, but they were like, gosh, we didn't know this was here, you know, and this is hidden and community clay works. You have horseback riding. I mean, they loved it. They had such a good time. So um, it was really a great trip. We got a lot of exposure out of their visit. So um, and then the next page is just some of the highlights um, throughout the, the, um, the various times of the year. So these are different publications that um, picked up stories on Buellton um, for different reasons. Some were, you know, road trip worthy, Central Coast, California, um, USA Today, under the radar attractions to visit on your next vacation, cheapisms, gorgeous weekend RV trips to take this fall. We're big on glamping stories with flying flags here. Um, MSN, Thrillist, you know, 11 weekend getaways within five hours of LA that are perfect for the fall. And you can go on and on. There's LA Eaters, best place to eat in the Central Coast wine country. Um, California's most unique wine tasting experiences, 50 best places to travel in 2022. So super, you know, 35 glamping spots and cozy cabins. So, I mean, it's, we're being picked up by some really great publications and being read out there and, and seen. So, um, Again, it all leads to that big TOT number that people are coming and visiting and staying in our hotels. So uh, the next slide, this just shows you, so print advertising, we kind of took a pause from print for a while because publications weren't even being produced there for a couple of years. Nobody was doing anything. So now I think a little bit of it is people had maybe screen fatigue and they kind of like picking up a map or a brochure and thumbing through it and looking through it again because we've all been digital for two years straight on Zoom and they're like, so we've actually seen a little bit of an increase in, in paper being picked up again, which is kind of interesting. Um, so we jump back in some of these, of course, Central Coast Maps, some of them we do every year. It's just, you need to be there. It's the only piece they produce and you wanna be a part of that. Um, the Westways Discover, again, that's a partnership with Visit SYV, California Road Trips, the San Jose Valley Visitor Guide, we're always um, in there. <clears throat> And then the certified folder displays, these are like when you go to a hotel and you have a bunch of brochures and a rack. Um, so we have a rack card, a brochure that goes in there to talk about Buellton, um, Yosemite Journal. We had Good Housekeeping Women's Day. We're a couple um, co-op opportunities. We had a couple Canadian markets um, that we reached out to, a San Diego magazine. That was a co-op with Central Coast Tourism um, Council. So some of these are, are a co-op effort. So if we can be 
sometimes it's it's hard to go as Buellton alone in something. It might not stand out as much as, okay, you're part of the Central Coast. Now I'm putting you near Ventura, San Luis Obispo, Monterey, da 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 So we're part of that bigger picture. So those some of these are Central Coast tourism co-ops that we partner in. Um, and then, of course, our map, we did a reprint this year because we had businesses come and go and changes and stuff. So we had to make edits on that and reprint. And then this year, um, also the World Mark, which is a timeshare property over in Solvang, um, they called and they have their TV set and they do videos and whatnot when people are checking in. Um, so we went ahead and submitted our guilt and commercial um, to them. And so that's playing in their property over there. So people who are staying there will find out what there is to do in Buellton and be able to visit us here. So, because usually those are a little bit longer stays at the, at the timeshare, they'll have time to explore. The next page is just kind of some images of some of the guides and places that we um, were in, in paper. That's all that is, a picture. Um, the next one, this is the, so digital marketing stories. We still work with Madden Media. Um, and these are stories that go out in a digital platform. So when you're sitting there surfing the net or you're on Facebook or something and an ad pops up, right? So that's kind of what we're doing. <laughs> Buellton's popping up in people's feeds, um, you know, if they fit the demographic and what we're looking for. So we'll have that stories and things that, you know, it, it you, brings them back to the stories. And so we can tell different things about Buellton. So that's our digital efforts we do. Um, something new we just started, that's the next page or next slide. Um, this is called the Buellton Exclusives and you all are able to download and do this as well. Um, it's through a company called Bandwango. And basically what it is, we're trying to, to get people to move about Buellton have some fun doing it and kind of earn some prizes doing it. So uh, it's called Buellton Exclusives. We have participating businesses who are a part of this, wineries, hotels, attractions. Um, some of them offer a discount some, and some don't, which is fine. Um, but what happens is you get it on your phone and then you'll go out to the property and you can check in. So if you check in at the property, it'll know that you've checked in. And so at so many different levels of check-ins, you can get up to 20. Uh, we have different gifts in the visitor center. So it starts out with, you know, your first check-in, you get a little first aid kit. And then maybe at your fifth check-in, you get um, a wine cup or a straw. I think they're stainless steel straw. Um, so up to 20, which we have like a nice wine tumbler and a blanket and our little canvas fields and bags. So there's some great prizes to make your way to um, if you get to all the check-ins. So we have all of that at the visitor center. And then again, some of these businesses are offering little um, discounts. So you might get a two for one or a 10% off your bill or whatever it might be. Um, so you can go on there, you can see who's participating, and then you can just go around and, and check in and enjoy the discounts. So it's all geo um, based so that, you know, your phone will recognize you're there. So if you check in, it's valid and legit. And knows that you're not just down the road somewhere checking in at all these places you have to actually go there so um so that's kind of fun something we started this year um and then the next slide this just talks about um <clears throat> a co-op opportunity we did with central coast tours and council again um, but this time they did it on pinterest and this was something new for us we hadn't really been in that space before um, so it was run by uh, Central Coast Tourism, works with a company out of, um, I believe they're in Texas. And um, anyhow, they set up this campaign. There were different partners in Central Coast that partnered on this uh, particular campaign. And it turned out to be a really big hit for us. And again, it was Pinterest. It's kind of a really cheap way to advertise. But the exposure, especially when people are planning weddings, they all must go to Pinterest because we did like a wedding post. And it got a ton of um, impressions and clicks and stuff. And then also um, we did like a glamping one here. So kind of a, an escape completely one, which is just like a glamping. And that got a lot of exposure as well and impressions you can see there. And we're still waiting for some of the results to come in on the summer like you mean it one. So, so that was kind of a fun um, co-op we did. We hadn't done that before. Uh, the next slide is a new award that we got this year. Uh, last year, we got the Telly Award. This year, we got the Davy Award. And again, it was for our general, um, our destination commercial that we did. And it was for general travel and tourism category. So that won us a Davy Award, which is awesome. And then something else we did this year. So Industrial Way had... Um, their own website and Facebook and stuff, but it was just kind of dead in the water. And I think Hugh Marjoram had started it, but of course they moved and it just kind of fizzled. And so we went ahead and 
reached out to him and said, is there any way we could take this over or purchase it from you to so that we could have ownership of it and try to get it going again? Um, so we worked a deal out with Hugh and went ahead and took over all the assets and everything there. So we're still uh, working on a, you know, kind of developing the whole plan for that. But um, we do have access to that, which is great so that we can kind of we, you know, we've lost some great wineries over there, which is really sad, Almarosa and McLean. And so we just went, you know what, we've got to act. We don't want to keep losing people because it's a great area and it's got a lot of potential, but we got to figure out what to do here. So anyhow, so that was kind of a, uh, a really good thing. Hopefully a win-win. I mean, he, you know, of course it was just sitting there. He wasn't doing anything with it. And, um, and now we're able to, to kind of strike up a plan for that. Uh, and then our podcast is the next one. So these are all of our, if you haven't listened, you know, I'm always learning something new. You think, you know, all these businesses and stuff, but when you get them on a podcast and you start talking and asking questions, it's amazing. Um, some of the stories that come out and it's really kind of cool. We've got some great people here and great businesses. Um, so if you haven't listened, it's called Meet Us in Buellton. It's a podcast you can find on any of your podcast channels or, you know, ways to get to it. Uh, we did 32 episodes. So we're calling that season one. Um, and depending on our budget and if we can get another season going, we will. Um, but it was really actually fun. So there there's just a plethora of episodes there about the different businesses, the history of Beulton, some of our events. Um, but you can go in and take a listen. And, and they're not super long. Um, they're easy listens. But uh, some of the stories are really great um, from um, all the people. In fact, we did one on Flag is Up Farms. And it was before the Queen passed away. And of course, Monty was dear friends with the Queen. So it was his daughter, Debbie, who did the podcast. And she tells a great story of her father's past. If you don't know it, it's very interesting and, and kind of tells you why he got into the training that he does and how it, how he got there. Um, but Debbie gives, you know, a nice story and how he worked with the Queen's horses and trained them all. And um, so anyhow, that's a good, that's a good one too. So there's just lots of good, good information there. It's kind of a fun list. If you don't have anything to do or you're traveling somewhere, throw it in and and listen to it. Um, okay. Um, and then this was kind of fun too. I, I, I'm sure you all were aware of this when it was going on the shop built and get rewarded program. So this was something we did as we were coming out of COVID to kind of help our restaurants, um, get moving again, right. And get back on their feet and kind of get back into it. So anytime if people were spent a hundred dollars in Buellton and they had to come in with their receipt that showed that proof of that they actually spent it at a store or any operation in Buellton had to be in the city of Buellton. Uh, we would, kind of write our initials on it that we saw it or stamped actually we stamped it, I think with Beelton Rocks um, on their receipt and then we would give them a $25 gift card in, to a local restaurant in Beelton so we went out and purchased all these gift cards for our local restaurants so we were helping them and then uh, we were getting people to spend their money in Beelton because they had to spend $100 at least in Beelton to get the receipt and bring it in to get a gift card and then they could draw so they would draw out of the barrel or whatever and they you know they'd get a gift card for and it could have been some of our fast food it might have been industrial if you didn't know right you just reached your hand in there and picked one out but we tried to support every restaurant in Beelton um, and again get people to spend so we gave away um, 268 gift cards we had to do like two runs of it because we ran out so quickly um, but people were so excited that like this is it that we just have to spend I'm like yeah you have to spend a hundred dollars and you know, we're getting their sales tax and then we're rewarding them with a $25 gift card that they're going to go back and probably spend more than that in a restaurant. <laughs> um, so anyhow, we hope that helped boost our economy a little bit there as well and and just keep the business in Beulton. Um, and then the next slide is just our billboards. Um, we're back to changing those up, which is fun on McMurray Road here. So you can see we did restaurant weeks, our winter and fall events, summer events, um, and then a general welcome to Beulton. So we keep those updated right now. It's the events um, Actually, it's uh, we didn't do Scarecrow Fest this year, but we're doing Winter Fest, the Fall Fest, and then actually um, the Garden Light Tour is up there. So that's going to be really good at the Botanic Garden this year. And then the next slide, um, Winter Fest. So the snow was back this year. It was crazy. So a lot of people, Breakfast with Santa was off the charts in the morning. Um, we had a group come in um that gave away all these beautiful stuffed animals to the kids um it was really sweet so anyhow we're planning to do all of that again this year we're working a little bit differently uh this year i think we're going to do two sittings for the breakfast because it was the senior center got totally inundated and we're running all over for juice and bacon and food and whatever it was nuts um so anyhow we're going to manage that a little bit differently this year but uh, we're looking forward to bringing it all back again and the kids love the snow so um all right and then this the end is just some key dates kind of you can look through that at your leisure um 
throughout the year, different things that happen in the news, whether it be local um, regarding the pandemic or if it's a national news item, you know, um, anyhow, just some things that maybe happened and could have affected travel or different things that we did. And that is all I have. And I totally ran through that, but I'm sorry, I took a while too. <laughs> it's a lot to get through, but happy to answer any questions. Again, thank you so much for <laughs> awarding us the contract. Again, we're looking forward to keeping this momentum going because I think we've got some really great years ahead with, with travel and tourism. So, um, and we've got Hotel Huga who renovated, which is really great. Um, it turned out really nice. So I'm excited about that. We've got 23 more rooms to add to our inventory and maybe there'll be more, who knows? So yeah, happy to answer any questions. The, the um, I just saw the the timeshare in, in solving. Yeah. Is that, do they pay TOTs? Um, not to Buellton. Not but, to Buellton, um, but know, I'm, I'm just wondering, we don't have any time to Buellton, but uh, if we, is that a, something that we should address? I don't know. It's an ownership it's thing, ownership so thing. I don't know if they would. Yeah, oh, yeah maybe not. And the other thing is, there's a tree that needs to be trimmed in front of your sign. I came across today, and there's no. When you I look at it, there's a bush growing. Up. It might be Caltrans. <laughs> Either way, it could get knocked down. But how do we get to it's it? It's just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it's right out front. And it's we different. changed um, recently, just the last weekend. Mar Mark Mendenhall does these for us and his good. team. So that one, and then the one up on Buell's property because it was getting faded and stuff. And that thing got tagged like the first week we had put it up years ago, and we painted over it kind of white and. It, Anyhow, then it just kind of faded. So we've replaced that one as well. And on the bottom, we put restaurants, wineries, and breweries. So just anything to try to draw people, because you can tell people are on their GPS and they're merging over to that right lane to get off of 154. It's like, you can, you know, series like move over, you know, exit's coming or whatever. So anyhow, we replaced that billboard as well. So it's fresh look now, but yeah. Yeah, I know there are some bushes right there and I don't know, I gotta ask Mark. I don't know if it's something we can get to or if it's on Caltrans, I'm not sure. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Anything else? Vice no? Mayor. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Madam Mayor, go ahead. Thank you very much. Kathy, I'm just really curious. Uh, this last year we have had, according to our finance director, record TOT, record sales tax. The city has never done so well in the past. How are you going to top this one? I don't know. <laughs> We've got 23 more rooms in our inventory. That'll help. <laughs> Maybe we'll get another hotel up. Um, yeah, it's been something. And, you know, I know the rates are quite, I mean, hotels are not cheap, um, you know, but the the market demands it so they can get it. But, yeah, I hope we can, Holly. We're going to try real hard. You and you and uh, your staff are incredible. I'm, I really appreciate the revenue that you help bring into the city. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. We, we enjoy it. So, Yeah, and Kathy, I just yeah. like to say that you and Jen have really done the Lord's work. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, this is money that has been well spent because looking at the numbers, you're doing something right because, you know, you have increased it by a monumental percentage. So I really appreciate all the work you awesome. guys have been doing. Thank you. Yeah, Jen's kind of, it took her two years to kind of get through everything that we do because of the pandemic. So it was a long training process for her, but I think we've been through everything now with her. So she's, um, she's got it down, but yeah, I definitely have a great team and um, also our marketing and PR team. I couldn't do it without them as well. They're just, it's everybody's, we're all clicking we're on the same page and um, we get it. So yeah, right. thank you. I appreciate your yeah. work. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, let us move on to consideration of a new contract with Metro Ventures LTD for Irma L. Tucker to provide provisional planning services. And the lead on this is gonna be Andrea Andrea Kiefer. Good, e good evening, Vice Mayor King, members of city council. Uh, the current contract is, uh, with Irma Tucker for, of Metro Ventures for professional planning services expires uh, November 10th of this year. Ms. Tucker has assisted the planning department um, by taking on major special projects and work that is subject to reimbursement by major developers um, in order to reduce the overall department workload and also to provide essential staffing coverage during a period of time, uh, which there has been limited available full-time staff. So most recently, um, limited full-time staff has occurred, ha did occur this year uh, around April through August uh, due to my extended medical leave and also the lack of a full-time assistant planner. So we are currently recruiting for a full-time assistant planner, and that position is expected to be filled in November of this year. Uh, so currently the department is staffed by myself, full-time planning technician, full-time, and then 
uh, two part-time positions, one of which um, is currently um, through Irma's contract. Um, the department does continue to see an increase in projects and workload coming through, and, it, and it's anticipated that this will this trend will continue over the next year or two. Um, at least the planning department is currently undertaking several long range planning efforts, as well as processing several large development projects throughout the city. And given the large volume of work the planning department is currently tasked with, Ms. Tucker's services will be necessary uh, to allow the completion of projects within, within anticipated timelines, as well as to allow for a smooth transition back into having uh, a full-time assistant or associate planner. Uh, the proposed new contract is for a total of $72,000. And I will note that this request does include an increase in the hourly rate proposed for Ms. Tucker. So it currently, for, under the current contract, it's $81 an hour. Um, and we're proposing $100 per hour. And so this is um, partially due to, you know, over the course of her time contracting with the city, I believe she's received one rate increase and that was for $1 an hour. I believe she started out, out at $80 an hour. And then I think after a couple of years, it was 81. Um, and so it's been several years um, and she's been working at the $81 per hour rate. Um, so in addition to that, the so the co total contract hours would be 720 hours, which is actually the same number of hours that she that are um, under her current contract. So you can kind of compare what that difference would be. Um, I believe her current contract is $58,320. Um, although this contract would be the same number of hours, 720, uh, the, the new contract is proposed to be over an 18 month period. Uh, the current contract is an eight month period. So the proposal here for this new contract would um, be it for a contract through May 10th of 2024. And this would, this would um, allow, so depending on the workload, these hours could be depleted before one year, after one year, but regardless, the number of hours would be the same, um, just depending on the work. It, there's meant to be built in flexibility, basically there, just depending on the workload month to month or week to week or depending on projects that are coming through. So um, Ms. Tucker's contract would continue to be funded by both general fund monies as well as outside sources such as grant funding. Um, one, of, one, of, one grant fund of note would be the REAP funds and LEAP funds um, for the housing element preparation. That's, that's one grant um, that she's been um, expending some of her hours on um, heavily, um, somewhat because we were in the depths of the housing element preparation at this point. So. Um, and in your staff report, there's a, there's a list of sort of the main projects that Irma is currently uh, working on, both current and long range planning efforts. Uh, so a budget amendment would be required uh, in the amount of $72,000. And at this point, staff recommends that the city council authorizes the city manager to enter into a, a new contract for contract planning services with Metro Ventures Limited. Uh, to begin on November 10th, 2022 and end on May 10th, 2024 for a total contract of amount not to exceed $72,000. So again, that's with, again, with a rate of $100 per hour. That's all I have and I'm available for any questions. Okay, any questions from council? Maybe not so much a question, but confirmation. This $72,000 is still cheaper than if we were to try to hire someone and bring them in-house with benefits and everything else. Is that accurate? Yes, that, that is accurate. Um, I, I will note that, um, as, as we've discussed here a, a number of occasions previously, our goal is to move away from having contract <laughs> staff uh, handle our, the, the work that we have ongoing. Um, and the contract that we have with Ms. Tucker was expected to expire this year. Uh, however, given, you know, as in previous years where we had COVID or other issues this year, we had a major staffing shortage. Um, much of the, the funding that was spent on Ms. Tucker's contract this year was intended to be um, uh, covered primarily by uh, reimbursable projects. But given the fact that uh, we were sh so short of staffing, we had to have her covering a number of different things, which caused a larger um, general, fund ex general fund expenditure. But we are looking at, as, as um, Ms. Kiefer noted, we are looking at uh, solutions moving forward. And given the increased workload, we're uh, investigating um, the possible addition of, an, of a new staff member in planning. 
and that would allow not only for the upkeep of the planning workload, but also uh, provide some flexibility and succession planning down the road as we anticipate in the next several years, there may be a retirement or two coming and we'll need to readjust duties. So we'll be back with the city council uh, to discuss that and whatever we come up with sometime before the next uh, budget cycle. But uh, understand that our, our goal is ultimately to move away from the contract model that we, we are with right now with regard to our planning staff and to uh, a, a model that is uh, primarily staffed by full-time um, city staff. Said. Anyone else, Madam Mayor? Uh, I, I had a couple comments. I can either give them now or I can wait, whatever you prefer, Vice Mayor. Okay, we can go out to the uh, public for comments or questions. Uh, no one in the audience, Linda, do we have anyone? We have no uh, comments. Zoom. Okay, I'll bring it back to uh, City Council for uh, further discussion or possible actions. I say no questions. Are you going to let Holly go? Madam Mayor, go ahead. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to uh, put my support behind this uh, contract. Uh, I'm finding out that Rose and Irma are working with SB CAG on a REAP project that uh, could mean a lot of money coming towards our river trail. Uh, and with everything else going on, the housing element, the loose update, uh, it just seems we have somebody so incredibly well qualified. Uh, I don't want to, I, I don't want to lose Irma at this point of the game. So I, I am hoping that council sees uh, the value in this seventy-two thousand dollars. Okay, John. Uh, I just had a couple of questions. Um, it was fifty-eight thousand something. Now it's seventy-two. So I, with, even though it wasn't budgeted, but our costs are only going up nineteen thousand a year for. Right. Than... So the current contract is for you know the same number of hours. Right. So it, yeah, it would be a nineteen dollar per hour in increase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so. The current contract is for an eight month period and this one is for a longer period, but yes, you're correct in that um, it's 58,000, currently 58,320, I believe. And this would be for 70,000. And that would be um, because of that um, increase in the hourly rate. And then the, the bill out rate when she's working on another project, is that different than what we pay or, or is that? No. no we just, that's just what we, do they cover part of her? Time? Yes, they, they pay that for us. All right, mm -hmm. that was my questions. Thank you. And I would make a motion to approve if that, at this time. I second. Okay, Linda. Okay, Councilmember Sanchez. Aye. Councilmember Lewis. Aye. Uh, Vice Mayor King. Aye. And Mayor Sierra. Aye. Thank you. Okay, money well spent. Uh, okay, let's move on to. Uh, Business item number six, allocation of funding sources for the Reservoir 2 roof repairs. And this is going to be led by Rose Hess. Thank you, sir. Um, we had discussed this item at the previous council meeting regarding um, funding sources for the Reservoir 2 roof repair projects. We're looking at a current cost estimate of approximately one9 six five million dollars um, at the last council meeting we talked about different funding sources including arpa um, general fund enterprise reserves and the low interest loan rates uh, from the state uh, i we did get direction with council that you wanted to use the balance of the arpa funds uh, i think the total was in around the nine hundred thousand whatever the balance was oh, for oh, that Yes. Um, and then we're to look into more information regarding the low interest loans. So we've reached out further with the, <clears throat> excuse me, with the representative from the state on that. There's four different packages um, in, in the application package that we need to provide. Uh, the first one is the general package. You said we need to get that submitted in, in order for us to be assigned to um, a project manager, so speak, who'd be able to answer more detailed questions for us. Um, and that's just general inf information that Chanel and I uh, would be able to fill out. Then the financial and environmental package goes into a little bit more detail in the project. 
And then more importantly is a technical package. The technical package requires 100% of the plans to be complete. So that would not be able to be submitted until December um, at the soonest. January probably is more realistic because that's the time frame we have with Tetra Tech for, to get to that point of their plan completion. Um, so we want determination from council and direction. If you want us to actually to submit and move forward with this, we can submit the general application and get assigned a project manager um, to be able to ask um, a lot more detailed questions. They're not able to provide us too much information at this point in time. Um, we do know that once the a complete application, which includes the technical portion, is submitted, it takes them four to six months to go through the process to review everything um, and then for the loan to be loan process to be complete. So if that timeline is January, we're looking at four to six months after that. As far as interest rates and what that would be, their interest rates, you know, it's very, they said right now it's 1.1%, but it will depend. Um, it changes January 1st of every year and remain in effect for that period. So we won't know till January what interest rate that um, the, the we would be offered at that point in time. They believe it will still be low. They, they can't give me um, further information. They gave me a hist history of it. In the past few years, it's been in you know the 1% um, range. So, I mean, that's, that's encouraging. Um, let's see, in 2021, it was 1.2, 2020 was 1.4. And before that was a little bit higher, 1.9, 1 1.8. And it wasn't until 2014, it was at just over to 2.08. Um, so at this current trend, even if it goes up, they don't anticipate it going up, you know, to 2%. Um, so, but we won't know till January, at least as far as a better confirmation for them. And we do know interest rate will be firm once the agreement is executed. Um, after all the packages have been submitted. Um, so that is as much information as we're able to obtain from the state right now until we do submit a, at least a general application portion um, and get assigned um, a project manager to this. Uh, let's see. That is the latest new information we do have. Um, and we're looking for direction from council. If you'd like us to continue to move forward uh, with submittal of the application, um, and we can go from there. Okay. Any questions from council? I do see a hand raised by the do mayor. Any? Sorry about that. Uh, I, I, I have two questions. First of all, uh, are there costs involved in completing these applications, these four components? There is not. Um, they did let us know that we would be able to withdraw our application at any time prior to actually completing the loan process. Um, should we need to, we'd have to provide and substantiate why we're withdrawing. Uh, but that is an option that we would be able to do. But there would be no costs at this point other than what, you know, time for staff to complete the package. We have to do the design anyway, so it's not like that's an, an extra superfluous cost that would be wasted uh, moving forward for the technical package. Okay, thank you. And my second question is, it said, you say it'll take four to six months after total uh, submission of the forms. Uh, do we have that long? Um, it's longer than we would like. We once, if we can ask, um, we I did ask her about timing on that, and could we start like you know because we have some funds and we have half of it, would we be able to start the project and get moving and keep our timeline moving, and then be, be reimbursed later? Um, but I think we have the cash flow to keep the process moving forward. And she believes that we should be able to, um, 
but again, she's, you know, directing me to wait so I, until I talk to the project manager that's assigned to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. John? Um, yeah, if we were, had the all the money today, when how soon could we start the project? We still have planning to do it. Um, we're in design. So as we soon go. as that design is ready to go, um, we're going to bid the project out. Uh, there's probably still some work with um, the roof manufacturer, depending on how we bid the project, but we'd be looking at construction probably in the in the late spring. So at, at the earliest. So. <clears throat> probably. So, I was. I know. I was a proponent of the financing mm -hmm. for cheap money. But uh, I think time's more important, and we have the money. Right. Um, if we could, I'd like, I'd like to see it start rolling as soon as possible. Without, with that, as long as the, if the loan isn't holding us up, I wouldn't right. want them. I have a question know. for Chanel about the loan. So we have one million available in ARPA funds, and then we have three million reserve in the Water Enterprise Fund. Is there any reason why, if we use the one million that we have in the Water Enterprise Fund, that we would not be fiscally okay because I am not a proponent for borrowing money that we already have. And the money in reserve for the water fund should be used towards capital projects and things for the water, you know, for the water department. This sort of fits right in there. So I'm I'm just confused as to why we would want to borrow money when we already have it. Like financially, the question is financially, if we use a million dollars from that 3 million reserve, are we putting ourselves in a situation that is uncomfortable for any reason financially? I can answer that question. I, and I think it's, it just prevents us from spending for future projects in the water fund, correct Rose? Yes, um, so we, you know we'd have to we'd have to relook at our income stream to see how quickly you know, and, and I don't believe we are you know really replenishing um, the reserve, uh, but that's for discussion future for mm -hmm. you know a new rate study to right. get us back up to par. And are there other projects you're currently saving that three million for, or is it just there you know as the cushion for that department? It's it's the cushion right now. We always have capital improvement projects and you know just large maintenance projects as they're coming, and we have large expenses as equipment fail and they get old and need to replace. So there's always going to be mm -hmm. um, that danger that yeah a, a need for it. So we just try to be conservative in how we're moving forward and trying to hit as much as we can when we can and and still you know at the same time look for grants and stuff to supplement also. But those are not necessarily easy to come by. If I'm, if I might, I, I, I tend to agree. Um, borrowing money that we already have and paying interest on it is not, it's not um, uh, the preferred method of doing things. In this particular case, what we had discussed was the the extremely low interest rate that this money was initially offered at, and we we just don't know where that's going to wind up. The other concern that that at least sits in my head, it doesn't exactly keep me up at night, but almost, um, mm -hmm. we have a we have an aging water system and we are finding more and more uh, need for emergency repairs. And my, my big concern is that we're gonna have a, a large failure one of these days that's gonna require a big upfront cash payment to take care of it. You know, it's just, and, um, you know, so if, if we can avoid depleting that at a reasonable cost, then it might be worthwhile. I, I you know, I know that, that uh, Rose has been, Doing the scoping of all of the uh, the pipes and such, and and you know, there's just no telling you know when these things are going to break. So that that was my concern going into this. Um, moving forward, you know, we clearly have the money if the council wants to spend it now. And uh, given the the uh, uncertainty with interest rates uh, that are being offered right now, and the the rising interest rates in general across the board, it may be worthwhile to. Uh, to, to look at just pulling that from reserves, but that was the rationale for looking at the Thank you. the the loan in the first place. 
Yeah, and I agree with uh, Scott on this. And I know that that and John would know better than I would is there are a lot of projects probably in the near future that we're going to have to use some of those rever those reserve funds for. Mm -hmm. And so this 1.1 interest rate is, in my mind, almost like free money. Um, I, I think going forward that we could probably look into this loan, use the funds that we have now for this project, get the ball rolling on this. And as pointed out in our staff report is that we can pull out of this at any time. So I think if the interest rates go up to the point where we say, eh, it's not really worth it, let's just pay it up front. Um, you know, we can always pull out at any time uh, and still have the project going forward. Um, I, I think that maybe you guys could look into that loan and see what our repayment on that is. I mean, a 1% interest rate is very, very low. So I think keeping that money in reserve, at least right now, would be prudent. We can certainly look into it. I, Rose, the time frame before we would know what the interest rate would be January. January. So January. we would, yeah, we would need to, to wait until January before we know. Right. But we can proceed forward. We have the ARPA funds to expend right. on our <clears throat> leading up to that point. And, uh, and we can um, bring a report back to the city council in January. Right. We know that number and we can have that decision made at that time. Right. So <laughs> if. Is there, is there any question? time difference whether we're proceeding with the loan uh, yeah. question? At so, this point, no. Okay. We're, we're, I just didn't want to hold up. I don't want right. to hold up the project for a few bucks and. Right. No, we're and, still we're going to keep moving case. forward. Like right. You know, <clears throat> we have the option, like you said, to to use our money in house, and we're not we're not hesitating right now. We're just we're just rolling forward. Right. And I think that that million dollar fund that we have is what is going to move the project forward mm -hmm. before we make a decision on whether we want to just pay Correct. it, pay the rest of it outright or not. So I, I don't think it's uh, it's going to hurt anything for us to. To, to hang on to that until we have a uh, full disclosure of what our loan's going to be. Madam Mayor, anything else? I do. Thank you. Uh, I just think that since it doesn't, it takes staff time to put this together, which they would pretty much be putting together anyway. And it's something we can decide down the line, whether we want to uh, proceed with it. We'll know the interest rates then. I just kind of think it's a no brainer at this point that we, we need to follow every avenue and in January, we'll have a better picture of money and what it's going to cost. We are using our <clears throat> ARPA funds. I just, I just think it's smart to be prepared to know everything, and it doesn't hurt to, it certainly doesn't hurt to um, put in the application. Right. So absolutely. I would make the motion if, if we're almost done, that we should continue right. with the okay. application. Scott, it's just, or, um, Greg, it's just direction, right? It's just direction staff, right? Everyone yeah. agree on that? I agree. Okay, then we'll move on. Thank, oh. you. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Rose. Okay. And last but not least, resolution number 2229, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Buellton, California, adopting a City Council manual establishing guidelines and procedures for council operations and related functions and activities. And the lead on this will be our city manager, Scott Wolf. Thank you, Vice Mayor King and Mayor Sierra and members of the city council. Um, the lion's share of the packet this evening is the uh, draft city council manual, which we looked at a couple of months ago, or I presented to you a couple of months ago without the various appendices to it. I have put it together in relatively final format. Um, and I present it to you this evening for consideration uh, and, and possible approval. Um, I will note for the record that this, uh, this document that's before you is, um, it's a new document. It's intended to replace um, the resolution that was adopted back in 2014, which uh, specifies council guidelines, norms, and procedures. Um, most of that information that was in that resolution has been transferred into this new document. It's found in, I believe, Chapter 7, having to do with City Council um, operations and such. But uh, this manual takes into consideration much more than just the, um, the, um, uh, the council operations and such. It, it delves a little bit into the, some of the various topics that the City Council will be looking at uh, during, in the course of business over a year or two or more uh, forever. It talks about uh, things such as ethics and uh, what's expected of council members, what's expected of staff, and and uh, how the city uh, and, and its 
employees will behave themselves. Uh, it talks about um, the city's travel policy. Again, the travel policy has been adopted by another document. It's incorporated uh, within this document as well. Um, there, there's a whole um, a wide range of issues that are discussed here. Um, I am happy to answer any questions that the city council may have if you have particular concerns about any uh, particular issue. Uh, we can uh, we can discuss that if you'd like to see further changes made. We'll we'll take uh, this back, make those changes, and return to you later if that's your desire. But at this point, I will uh, conclude um, and uh, just answer any questions the council may have. Okay. Any questions from council? John, Madam Mayor. I I had some questions and comments. Can I mix them all together? Or do you want yeah, me to? Yeah, absolutely, go ahead. Okay, I appreciate it. Uh, in uh, chapter three, council duties, I don't see anywhere in there that it says that the council is responsible for hiring the city manager and city attorney. I might have missed that. Oh, that, that's okay, that's in the municipal code. Okay. It, yeah. So that should probably in, be in the council handbook. Um, let's see, it's on page 126 personnel matters, something about the council, and I don't, oh, it said something like the hire or firing of city employees and that council will be notified perhaps in closed session. And I didn't understand that because I don't think our council has ever uh, really gotten involved. Where am I? Um, page, uh, you said one, uh, yes. oh, 126 of the- uh, 7.4.1. Okay, thank you. Thank you, yeah, that was it. Let's 7.4.1. Okay, it may exclude any such closed session during the examination. Oh, okay. That's just a, that's just a, yeah. Madam Mayor, that's just a standard Brown Act uh, provision. Right. Okay. What, what the city manager has done is incorporated some Brown Act provisions into here. So that's under the fact that meetings will be public, but that some items may be in closed session. That's all that is. We're good. Okay. The personnel matters that are being discussed there typically would be my performance evaluation or the city attorney's performance evaluation. Oh, well, we, we love talking about your performances. So, <laughs> yeah, not that, but yes, you're right. The typical staff uh, personnel issues would be handled by staff, and we would potentially report to the city council on that in open session. Thank you very much. When you get to ethics, I know it says that uh, it's both in, in chapter nine. Uh, the, it states that the community, the community, uh, local leaders are expected to set tone and direction for operations. It needs, I think, somewhere in the ethics, you need to put down that elected officials are held to a higher standard. I just, I just think, um, I, I was reading. My sister here was talking about a council member in her community who wanted to join a. a, a closed membership and he was pushing to get the membership uh, open to more people so that he could get his name on on this club membership and got into a lot of trouble. I just I just think somewhere in this handbook we should say that council members, not only are we expected to set the tone and direction for city operations, but that council members are kind of held to a higher standard. We're expected to follow everything and I know that in ethics that we're not allowed and we take all these classes, we're not allowed to uh, try to get anything done that's going to benefit ourselves. I think we understand it, but I think somehow it needs to be put down in this manual. Okay, I will I will uh, make a note of that. I, If I'm not mistaken, there is something Scott, to that effect in the adopted Buellton Code of Ethics. Yeah, Madam Mayor, it's uh, in 1.9 of ethical practices is it says the citizens of Buellton expect and must receive the highest standard of ethics from all those in public service, regardless of personal consideration or interest. I think that basically says the same thing. Thank you very much. I must have missed that one. Um, on 7.66, maintenance of order and decorum, I just want to, as, as having had the privilege of serving on council with everybody, I want to say that 
our council, I, I know you have to put it in here how we have to be nice to each other and no backstabbing and no putting each other down, no raised voices. I might have done that a couple times myself and I apologize, but for the most part, I, I think our council is, is incredibly well run. I mean, people ask the mayor or the vice mayor to speak before they speak. And I just think, I, I just wanted to thank council and I, I'm sure everybody's already read their, their previous council handbook so they knew how to do this. But um, I, I just, I truly appreciate that uh, everybody on council has read like Robert's rule of order and, and that we all know how to behave like grownups on the dais. I really, really appreciate that. And I also thought your uh, Appendix D, the city of Buellton Code of Ethics is one of the key appendixes that you put into this book. It was a lot of work putting it together. It's a really long uh, handbook. And uh, I just really appreciate the work that went into it. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, I think that was a previous city council that we were talking about, <laughs> six, seven, six point six. <laughs> hey, 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 no, no, no. Because we've been here a long time. <laughs> a long time, and we all play very well together. We all hold each other in esteem. We don't put each other down. And um, I just, I just, I'm so, I'm so grateful to be a part of the Buellton City Council and not some of our other local uh, city councils around us. So I just appreciate. Maybe we should send them this manual. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I would uh, like to thank the, the may mayor for uh, her guidance and uh, and her expertise and training. Because I just start being the new city council member it's only under your guidance that we learned all these manners and thank you very much <laughs> thank you but i think everybody had the manners when they came to council and i appreciate the vice mayor for letting me ramble about this i think i went past my three minutes <laughs> oh i don't think we have that staff. Violation. <laughs> thank you very uh, much. any any other questions for staff before we go out to the public for comment no thank you uh linda do we have any uh zoom comments or questions from the public no we don't all right let us come back to the city council for further discussion or possible action and adoption so i would motion that we approve resolution number 22-29 a resolution of the city council of the city of buellton california adopting a city council manual establishing guidelines and procedures for council operations and related functions and activities with the edits suggested, if any, are to be adopted this evening. I'll second that. Linda? Okay. Councilmember Lewis? Aye. Vice Mayor King? Aye. Councilmember Sanchez? Aye. And Mayor Sierra? Aye. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to, and good job on that, Scott. Actually, that was, uh, I know you and everybody in staff that worked on this. It was a tremendous amount of work and effort to go into this. And it really is, you know, it's really going to be for the future councils, whether it be us or someone else that, you know, if you go through this manual and things that were pointed out in here, you know, is going to be the expectation of future council members. So I really appreciate your hard work on this. And having said that, anyone else before I move on to city manager's report? Okay, moving on to city manager's report. Thank you very much. Just two items uh, for the city manager's report this evening. They've both been covered previously here, uh, but I'll mention them again. Um, the first one, uh, just a general note, October 16th, that's this Sunday from one to four um, at the Oak Valley Elementary School multi-purpose room will be the uh, uh, Buellton City Council Candidates Forum that is put on by the Chamber of Commerce. Um, it's not a city sponsored event, but bring it up out of general public interest. Uh, the second, also a matter of general public interest, uh, will occur October 19th, and this was mentioned earlier by Mayor Sierra, um, from 10.30 a.m., I believe, to 1 p.m., or maybe it's 1.30. The Senior Center will be um, holding an event celebrating the opening of their Veterans Food uh, Distribution Service Center, which is a major new initiative that's being undertaken by San Inez Valley uh, Community Outreach, 
uh, to serve uh, the community and in particular veterans within our community. So uh, the public is invited. The city council received an invitation via email uh, yesterday. So with that, I am happy to answer any general questions the city council may have, but I will conclude the city manager's report. Any questions for Scott? Now, are you gonna be here at our next meeting or? I will be here at the next city council meeting. Okay. I will be out um, uh, from tomorrow you. through next Friday, but I will be back for the next council meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. Okay. okay, anything from our city attorney? Not a thing, sir. Okay, having that in mind, I am going to adjourn this meeting until October 27th, 2022 at 6 p.m. Thank you, Bye, Scott. Holly.